This video is brought to you by SucceedSchool.com. With complete lessons and resources, assessments, learning plans and schemes of work for students, parents and teachers, for revision, for catch-up or just to get ahead in class, visit SucceedSchool.com now for your free trial lessons. SucceedSchool.com. Learn to succeed. Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE and IGCSE. This lesson, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. <music> One of the key ways that biologists get an understanding of the living world around us is by classifying organisms. For example, classifying things as plants or animals. When we really began to study what was going on in cells, biologists realised the cells themselves could be classified into two key types, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Here are our standard diagrams of an animal cell and a plant cell, which you've probably seen repeatedly since you began high school. I go through their features in detail in another video, which you can see if you just click up here. But to quickly recap, both cells have a cell membrane around the outside to control what gets into and out of the cell. These membranes contain a cytoplasm, where reactions take place, and a nucleus which controls everything which happens in the cell. The standard plant cells also have a few more features, including chloroplasts for photosynthesis, a vacuole for storing cell sap, and a tough cell wall. Remember, only the plant cells have a cell wall, and the wall is only to give the cells some shape and rigidity. The membrane is still in charge of what gets in and out. Now these plant and animal cells are what we call eukaryotic cells, with the organisms made out of eukaryotic cells being eukaryotes. I'm a eukaryote, you're a eukaryote, and pretty much every organism which is big enough to be seen without a microscope is also a eukaryote. Try to learn the phrase, you are a eukaryote, to remember which is which. Through a microscope, the key feature which tells us a cell is eukaryotic is the nucleus. This is where the DNA is stored. Again, I'm sure you already knew that your cells have a nucleus. So as long as you remember you are a eukaryote, you should be fine. Eukaryotic cells also tend to have various organelles in the cytoplasm, such as mitochondria and a rough endoplasmic reticulum. Basically, any other smaller structures within the cell are also a pretty good sign that it's a eukaryote. But the main thing you're looking for is the nucleus. In contrast, prokaryotes are much simpler organisms than most eukaryotes. Here's a bacterial cell, for example. It's a pretty standard prokaryote, and there's a couple of things to notice. Firstly, and most importantly, it doesn't have a nucleus. Its DNA forms this loop instead of a nucleus. This is called its chromosomal DNA. Now this loop might be drawn as a nice simple loop like this, or it might be drawn twisted around, but look to see whether it's got any ends or not. If it doesn't have any ends, then that is the chromosomal DNA of a prokaryote. It might also have smaller rings of DNA, known as plasmids, like this. We call these plasmid DNA. Any cell with its DNA in these loops throughout the cell, rather than collected into a central nucleus, is a prokaryotic cell. Secondly, it's also worth noting that bacterial cells have a cell wall in addition to a membrane, which strengthens the cell just as the cell wall does in plant cells. The key thing to look out for here, as you're probably gathering, is whether or not there's a nucleus. If there's a nucleus, it's a eukaryotic cell. Remember, you are a eukaryote and your cells have nuclei, so if there's a nucleus, it must be eukaryotic, just like your cells. If there's no nucleus, it's prokaryotic. One final thing to be aware of is that prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, tend to be much smaller than eukaryotic cells. A typical bacterial cell, a prokaryote remember, might be around 1 micrometer in size, while a typical eukaryotic cell might be around 30 micrometers in size. The small size of the prokaryotes means that there simply isn't room for any organelles like mitochondria or a rough endoplasmic reticulum, and they won't be present in prokaryotes. You do need to be able to calculate the size of cells when viewed through a microscope, and if you click up here, you can watch a video which explains how to do that. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it'd be great if you let me know in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get a notification the next time I upload a video. 
If you check the description, I've got links to my revision guides, to SnapQuiz, that's my revision website and app, and to SucceedSchool.com. That's my website with full lesson plans, schemes of work, and end of unit tests for both teachers and students. I've also got links in the description to my Twitter, my Instagram, my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and there's links to my other YouTube channels, Not School and Not School Plays. You can also click just here to subscribe to this channel, and you can click here to check out this related video. Good luck in your GCSEs and IGCSEs, and thanks very much for watching.